Nardone here, once again, pouring myself out for the benefit and entertainment of mankind, asking nothing in return but your awe. Hey, Yvonne, who's with us today? We got Alan Brown today. Alan Brown, that's right. Crushing ADB, now crushing TV, but always crushing ass. The ass crusher himself, Alan Brown. Alan, my friend, welcome to the Tom Nardone. Tom, welcome to the <laughs> welcome to the Tom Nardone show. How are you doing, you beautiful? Uh, I'm doing great. You know, I did a European speaking tour uh, earlier in the year, and, and we stopped in um, in um, uh, France, and that's where they have the Tom Nardone show. Le Tom Narchon. You know, I got to tell you, uh, you know, that was a beautiful We're intro. I'm glad you began by uh, uh, showcasing my mistake. I think, uh, you know, that was nice. I'm, I'm sure you'll return the favor. <laughs> it's, great, it's great to see you guys. You look fabulous, and uh, I'm just delighted to be here on the show. Yeah, I'm excited that you're, uh, you're in your studio. Yeah, brand new studio for Crusher TV. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, the, big, the big lights. Yeah, did yeah, you did you uh well. your backdrop there? Did you uh seek any uh advisement for that? Are you suggesting that I did that I did not get good advisement on it? No, Alan, I'm reminding oh, you. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes. I sought your advisement and you advised me well, my friend. Well, this it is was my pleasure. I'm yeah, glad yeah. To have, glad to have had such a small part of this. Uh now for those of you that, if there are any of you that don't know, uh, Alan Brown does the Crusher, ADD Crusher videos. And uh, that was actually my first, I guess, formal education with uh, ADD or any of that kind of stuff. Alan, um, now you're doing Crusher TV. How did you go from, uh, I mean, you, I mean, obviously your videos are still for sale and you're still, you know, behind all that. And how is, the, what is going to be different about Crusher TV? Than, than like what we saw in the ADD videos? Well, it's a lot of the same stuff because if you think about the kinds of things that I teach in ADD Crusher videos, mm -hmm. it's, a lot of, it's a lot of brain hacks. It's a lot, you know, I'm not teaching you how to download apps and go do this for productivity. I'm not teaching you how to, you know, go buy a new planner or whatever. I'm just teaching you ways to change the way you think and the inputs into your brain like diet, and exercise, and other stuff. But what we're doing on Crusher TV is the same exact kind of stuff but it's for anyone who's seeking higher productivity or better quality of life, uh, whether you're ADHD or just a busy entrepreneur or a crazy busy professional. So every week we're going to have a, another episode where we'll have a guest expert on and we will teach uh, just one powerful thing that can help people get more stuff done with less stress and less effort. So, Sounds exciting. So are these like 15 minutes, 30 minutes? I mean, you're doing them weekly? Yeah, they'll, yeah they'll, every Monday night, 10 o'clock Eastern time, um, and uh, yeah, they'll run about 30, 35 minutes an episode, depending. And there'll be some serious stuff in there, some serious teaching, and also some loving, and also some fun. <laughs> I have a little stick. I have a little stick where I go from loving mode to teaching mode. And we have a little clip of a nun spanking a kid. Like from mom mode to dad mode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> from good cop to bad cop. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, and it'll air every Monday night at 10 p.m. But uh, uh, and it's a membership thing, and it costs just a buck to join um, to try it for for a month. And um, and you can watch the archived episodes anytime, anywhere on any device. So yeah, it airs. The first air is Monday night, but then you can watch it anytime in the archive. Well, your your studio is is beautiful, and uh, it um, it uh, looks like you got a pretty substantial investment in there so man i hope uh i hope that works out really well Thank yvonne you. and i yvonne and i were watching your uh the previews uh, mm -hmm. uh this morning the three videos and i thought i saw a picture uh that had jeff copper on the little tv so is, is that kind of how your your guests are in your student your your tv back your little monitor back there is where your guests will be exactly uh the guests will show up uh, here on the monitor and then of course they'll go full screen uh, Jeff is a guest. Uh, Lori Dupar is our first guest. Um, Stacy Tourist, who I think right. you guys know, she'll be our, our guest uh, on September 28th. She got a pretty cool episode, and so on. At some point, I'm going to get you guys on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to think of something brilliant. Yeah, yeah you'll, you'll just have to figure out a brain <laughs> hack that you can teach our, our uh, viewers, but I'm sure you will. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Um, you know, 
Yvonne's hoarding the show notes. Uh, she she likes the title of producer, so she kind of has. Uh, uh, we, I, I mean, I kind of vaguely know what we're going to talk about today. But uh, Yvonne, why don't you? Well, I had a couple questions for you because I kind of researched oh. you a little bit on your Facebook, and oh, yeah. and so I saw some pictures that were kind of a little <laughs> a little just questioning for me. I was like, give this picture of T.J. Hooker. <laughs> yeah, what is up with that? Do you have a, a whole infatuation with T.J. Hooker or? Um, well. Uh, Hero? I, first of all, I have to compliment you on your eye for good taste. <laughs> uh, you know, um, well, you know, I, I, I grew up in the 70s, and, you know, yeah, T.P. Hooker was like, I mean, when you think about the action sequences <laughs> at the beginning of the show, think about it. it's supposed to be like a crime drama, right? Uh -huh. and, and the big climax in the, in the, in the uh, you know, the opening to the show is when T.J. Martin, it's uh, William Shatner. William Shatner. He's yeah. chasing the guy down the street, and instead of pulling his gun and blowing his way, blowing him away, he grabs his baton and he throws it at him, and he trips. Him out. And that's supposed to be like, wow, that's a cool job. So anyway, Rachel and I were were uh, attending a wedding up uh, near Sacramento, and we stayed with some dear friends, and we were just had the you know the evening to eat. Thai food or whatever and drink some wine and we thought what should we watch on Apple TV or whatever we watch and somebody said like let's just do a TJ Hooker marathon and I was like <laughs> how like completely obscure yes let's do it and so somebody posted that back on my page and, uh -huh. like, and, <laughs> okay. and oh and that's the other thing somebody I think they bought a, as after that our friends sent us a gift of the TJ Hooker seasons one and two <laughs> anyway, Heather Locklear yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, oh, hey, there was another picture that, uh, you know, Yvonne was looking at him. She goes, Tom, look at this picture. And then she hands it over to me. And it didn't really, and it didn't really register at first. I mean, I knew what you were wearing. But then she goes, does he not look like a stormtrooper? Oh, and my I'm God. Like, I and, uh, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was your black and white motorcycle gear, man. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that I was that's actually. You know, I might actually morph a stormtrooper helmet on that uniform, and uh, really. You know what? I look forward to seeing <laughs> how bad you make me look, uh, because because you have every right, and uh, of course you guys pick the two like odd bosses. So anyway, <laughs> I, 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 I race I race motorcycles uh, for fun, and um, I was um, actually at that time I was in my living in my condo in Brooklyn. And I was recovering from a crash. I still have this titanium plate here, and I was just starting to get healthy enough. And I had this guy who makes custom leathers. Uh, I'll give him a plug. Um, uh, it's called Heroic Leathers, and he custom makes leathers for you. So he measured like 85 dimensions on my body, and he made these things custom. Now, I wanted a two-piece suit. Usually these things are one piece, so there seems you have to pull them on, and it's really tough. But I wanted a two-piece because my shoulder was so messed up, I couldn't get into it. So I needed a two-piece, the, the lowers and then the uppers. And because he did a two-piece, he did this like black stripe around the middle. And that is what made me look like a stupid kind of stormtrooper. If that black belt stripe weren't there, it wouldn't look nearly as stupid. But yeah, so, so no, he was, but he was, he was so proud of it. He got me. I stood up in my window. This is uh, my condo in Brooklyn. It's on the 11th floor. And you got, I don't know if you can see, but you got Manhattan across the river. It's pretty cool. But I got up there and stood up on a ledge in, 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 my, in my apartment there and just did a few poses for him. And then <laughs> I ended up on Facebook. You got to be careful. I'm glad you, you didn't find anything what worse. What, what's that? You got to be careful what you post because we'll, we'll uh, find yeah. it. Was, <laughs> yeah, you, you forget what about the old pictures. I mean, Facebook's been around. I, I I couldn't believe like five years or six years ago I was on that. That's when it all started. But I didn't wouldn't pictures that you know old pictures. I haven't seen them forever. I'm like man, I forgot that was even on Facebook. So you might have yeah. to do an inventory. And you're a much wiser man now. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're gonna talk to you a little bit about motivation. See, you see, Alan. Today. You see, nothing to worry about. That's your thing, right? <laughs> So, That's one of my things. I'm not a motivational speaker, but I know. No, how to no, but I mean, but AD and getting motivated is something that 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 we both struggle with. It's getting within motivated. the confines of your wheelhouse, you know. If 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 you can't do it, Alan, I mean, if you can't do it, you know, then 
<laughs> okay, don't worry, I'll do it. I'll try. I'll try. All right. Wait, we lost my uh, we lost my little visual here. What happened? Did this guy die? Let me let me get this started here. Okay. Now, mo motivation. Uh, you know, there's. It, I find it a little irritating. Uh, certain other types of people that are motivated or showing their motivation because sometimes, and you know what I'm talking about, Alan. It, it's like a lot of rah rah, which you know, all all bark and it's it's and or it's just a bunch of like manufactured enthusiasm. Like I know a lot of retail stores. I won't name any specifically, <laughs> but you know, they, they'll they'll you know, give me a you know, oh, we'll just pick you know, Walmart. Maybe for example, yeah, you know, you give know. me a W, give me an A, give me an L. I mean, that manufactured enthusiasm. You know what? I mean, now I can't speak for any other place but Walmart because I don't work for Walmart. Never but have another. Real, so I'll only speak for names. Walmart. I would never suggest any other retail place would would be this way. But it really doesn't inspire everybody. What it does is it makes them hate going to the stupid meeting. It doesn't make them feel good about it. It, it just irritates them and, and no one likes it. It really doesn't motivate them at all. It, let's, it, let's say though, go ahead, sorry. No, I'm done. Let's, let's say though that you were in the spirit, right? That you were, you know, let's say you're a new employee of, was it Wall Depot? The Whatever. No, I don't know. I don't work for Wall Depot. But anyway, go ahead. Well, anyway, good. let's let's say that you you were you that you were signed up for the program and you were like pretty psyched and just started. And all that. You just started and you're like, yeah, this is great. I got this job and, I, and I'm totally psyched. I'm going to go to the meetings, etc. Even still, even without the cynicism, the, the 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 problem with motivational kind of speaking and the rah rah thing is that it's temporary. It's temporary, even if you pay, and with all due respect to Tony Robbins, my God, but if you pay you know, $10,000 to go to a Tony Robbins thing, you know, you walk out of there and you might be flying, I've never done one, but you might be flying high and all psyched up, but three days later, what do you have? If you're listening to the tapes all the time or whatever, or the, 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 you know, the, the recordings, you can keep yourself fired up, but just the fact that you need to keep playing the program to stay motivated, I don't, I don't get that. To me, I would rather have something change in my brain, like a brain hack, to change the way I view things. And, you know, I, I teach, as you probably will recall from the videos, I teach uh, in way two. It's get a nagging desire. Find the things that really piss you off about your life or your ADHD or your, you know, your so-called productivity or lack thereof. Find the things that you really want in life and just keep those things front of mind. You don't need somebody at a meeting or at a conference or whatever to say, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, we're going to do this. <laughs> you just need to look at the shit in your life. And you go, you know, what? I've, I'm pissed at this. I'm sick of it. I don't want it anymore. And right there, you look at my face. Look how pissed I am. <laughs> you look pissed. I got to you look pissed. And, in, no, and seriously, when you do this, you can actually start to create the neurotransmitters that move you forward, that get you motivated. This is science-based stuff. Get psyched about something. You don't need somebody else to psych you. You psych your damn self by simply focusing on the shit that is not going right and the shit that you really, really want out of life. Negative nag and a positive nag. Yeah, and it, it you're right about the um, being that you can't really motivate anybody long term. Now, Yvonne really, you know, she tries to motivate me uh, to Through do fear things. and intimidation. And that works, but that's it works. but that's immediate. That does work. I mean, that's Im immediate. Like, it's like if okay, we get in trouble, then I'll do it. Like, okay, let's just say now. Tell let's if something in the house is broken, okay, and and you want it fixed like now. You know exactly how to get me to do it right now, don't you? Bitch. No. <laughs> you, what do you threaten to do? You gonna? Pick oh, I threaten to hire somebody. Yeah, you see, so now I, that, wait, that, what is what does she do? I threaten to hire somebody. Yeah, and you so, you threaten to hire like a, a hot Brazilian pool boy. Yeah, it, it exactly. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter if it was a plumber. It, it wouldn't matter if it was a four hundred pound asshole. Okay, it, it's just the but whoever it is, I'm gonna have to pay him when he's done. So I'm gonna have to sit on my ass and and watch a hundred dollars every fifteen minutes go sailing out of my bank account. There's no way that's gonna happen. So I will always do it. She but, has found your she has found your negative nag and your yes, positive nag. You know, I'm a cheap yeah. I am a cheap bastard. I am more cheap than I am lazy. So and she knows this. 
And <laughs> well, we had a tree that was in the front yard, and I was going to hire someone to haul it away. But so yeah. Tom, to get himself motivated, he decided to make a production video out of how he took the tree, chopped it up, dragged it through the front door, through the back door, and then threw it over the fence. Okay. And he look, took a, he I, took an entire cedar tree. Yeah, there's a video of it on the house. ADHD. I didn't even watch it. It stressed me out so bad. Yeah, I was actually, I was going to post the video, which I did end up posting it. But before I posted it, I was just about to, oh, wait a minute. I had a brainstorm. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually, when Yvonne gets home, because I had the house all cleaned up. There was hardly a, well, hardly a trace that the tree had no, come through I'm the house. No, still vacuuming up. Oh, please. So <laughs> anyway, my, my thought was I was going to get the camera and have that thing trained uh, on Yvonne, and I was going to film her reaction so that in the corner of the screen, you could see Yvonne and how she's reacting to it. And it really started out great, but as soon as I mentioned what I'm about to do, uh, she she goes, Whoa. you know what? She closed the she goes, Tom, you are freaking me out. I can't believe it. I mean, she <laughs> couldn't it believe down. it happened. And I, I told her out. it happened. She knew it happened. But when it got to the point where she was going to have to watch a, uh, you know, pieces of tree getting drugged through the house, uh, then you know, she couldn't the take it. Her anxiety course. went just kaput, and, and that was it. So I just had to post it as it was. So it's not everything it could have been. It and I apologize on Yvonne's behalf to all the fans out there. The video is, you know, not 100% of what it could have been. But it, you know, in your defense, uh, anxiety is a real thing. So I understand all so that. So he kind of had to motivate himself by making it a fun thing. Yeah. So I, you know, in anything I can do, if I can showcase, you know, stupidity or whatever it is you want to call it, uh, that that's a lot of fun. And that, and, that, and that, honestly, I was actually thinking about, you know, this scene, that scene. I, I shot the whole thing on my iPod, uh, like I always do. Every video I've ever made, I think, yeah, I've shot everything on my iPod. Uh, you know, I got a little tripod set up for it, and I, I even had like a this one time where I had like it like this, it's like twelve feet in the air, you know, aimed down. I couldn't even see what it was looking at, but uh, it actually came out pretty decent. All right, sorry, I was doing that. And you reminded me, by the way, of the first video of yours that I saw, which was you deciding that you're going to make a cake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That that was and, no. That was the first video I ever made ever, and I shot and, I shot that one on the yeah, iPod. Yeah, because he too. lost the blunder. I'll tell you how that because I don't know if you read the, the there was a blog post that preceded that, and what happened was I woke up and I went downstairs, and Yvonne sent me a message from the doctor's office. Hey, I went to the doctor's office, and she I said okay, and she goes, look, I couldn't find my mixer, so I got to go to Walmart and get a mixer. And I, and I, my response was like, well, my God, I hope you don't lose your car. You know, I mean, you just got, you, you lose, I mean, what, you just going to go out and buy a new one? I said, yeah. I said, well, hold on. I said, look, cause I don't want to go buy a mixer cause I'm cheap. And I said, look, look, I, just let me, give me a minute. I'm going to look for it. So she goes, well, you got five minutes cause I'm leaving here in five minutes and I won't have the Wi-Fi connection. So I am scrambling all over the place and I pull out this, uh, it, actually it's a milk, a milkshake or a hot chocolate mixer? Who, who the hell has one of those? Anyway? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It was it, it was one of those things. It's just like a one single yeah. thing. Yeah, right? it's great for pudding and stuff like that. Yeah. And gravy, yeah. And you determined that you would show the world that you can make a cake with this one little mix stick. Well, I'm getting to that. So I right. said, I, <laughs> sorry. So <laughs> then that's not what happened. So I, I, I said, I took that, I took it, yeah. <laughs> I took a picture of this thing in my hand. And I sent it to her, and she goes, nice try. That's the stupid milkshake mixer or whatever like that. So I am scrambling. I'm like, damn it, because I really thought I won. But all I found was one beater. So I, I, I ran out in the garage, and I got my drill, and I just chucked it into the drill. And I took a picture of the drill with the beater sticking out of it. And she goes, nice try, Tom. I'm going to Walmart. So she goes to Walmart and then comes back. I don't remember if she got a mixer or not, but she didn't bake the cake. Well, the next day I'm off. And I got home early, and she was gone all day. So I'm like, you know what? I am going to make this cake, and I'm going to use this mixer because I don't believe her when she says that it won't work. So I figured, you know, you know, I wonder if I could make a video of it. And I didn't know if I'd forget to film this or that. But no, it actually came out pretty good cutting it all together. But that was a, yeah, that was a pretty, uh, I'd forgotten all about that. Actually, that you was, know what? That was my first Tom Nardone experience. <laughs> uh, that was the first blog of yours I read, and then I saw that video, and I thought, this guy is freaking nuts. What is he doing on his day off, yeah. proving to his wife that he can bake a cake with his hand drill? I love this man. And then, you know, I have to meet this man. 
Yvonne made a follow-up video. I made a follow-up. I made tabbouleh with a cord. She, she mixed up her tabbouleh with the same with exact the same thing. drill. She yeah. became, she was a convert. Yeah, yeah well. Was, yeah, but I still bought a mixer. Well, but actually, it, so. if you, the first vi actually the first three videos we made, I, I forgot the year before there was a no. It was actually right at the beginning of the book. It was a uh, my truck. It was cleaning out my truck. There's like three videos of us cleaning out my truck, and it's pretty detailed. And I think Yvonne ends up squirting me with the hose because she got really angry or pissed off about something. But uh, anyway, that was well, who uh, keeps a jar of peanut butter in the truck? And it it was lunch. It's what I eat for lunch. Yeah. I mean, damn it, what's the matter with peanut butter? I don't do it now slight. because I'm not allowed to eat anything good. <laughs> Oh, we're on diets, Alan. Oh, and, and speaking of you, because I know diets are right up your wheelhouse. And this is, yeah. I'll tell you, and I mean, I, don't, I know that there's an explanation, but we're on I'm the just Boca saying, Burger. We went from the stir fry diet to the Boca Burger. You diet. can almost identify everything in life that is bad for you because you it's good or you really like it. That's how you know what's bad. I mean, you don't have to, I mean, all the science and stuff, you know, you know, whatever. But if it's something you like and it's good, it's, it's definitely bad for you. No doubt yeah. about it. It's bad for you. And the, the shit, you know, the other shit is, oh, oh, that, yo, oh, but it's good for you. Oh, but it's good for you. No, no one ever says, oh, you know, it's, it's, why is that? Why is everything that's shit is, 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 is. And because we're not eating, I don't cook because it's just no fun. Because we just have terrible ingredients now. Yeah, and I, we got so sick of vegetables, we just went to Boca Burgers. Well, I'm not sick of vegetables. You just quit buying. Them. I just, yeah, I quit buying. But, but honestly, you know, I don't even, I don't even get excited when it's like time to eat anymore, which is probably why I've lost a lot of weight. Like protein because shake that's like been my beans. diet plan: is that all I eat, and I, when I say all, I mean rarely do I differ. Is a can of beans or maybe a double can of beans if I'm really hungry, and I never really get excited about dinner because I know what it is: it's beans. And, it, and there's only so many things you can do with beans. I, I must, buy cases of it. And I put Walmart. mustard in mine. Yeah. And uh, but that's it. I, I, you know, and I don't get excited at dinner time. So, like, are we oh, are we swearing off the animal proteins here? Yeah, pretty much. We've gone vegan. Yeah, but not but not not because not we care we're about weird. Animals. Not because we're weird. It's just <laughs> it's just because it's too much of a pain in the ass to clean all the expensive. shit and buy the shit, and it yeah. stinks if you don't eat it in time. And Yvonne buys shit that I can't have so that it can turn brown in the damn refrigerator, and then we can throw it away. So you just got a, a cabinet full of cans of beans. No shit. Cans <laughs> of beans and that, protein, refrigerator I, full of protein shakes of yeah, water, and there's. The freezer's empty. There, oh, except for there's there's one. There are vegetables in there actually. If you consider this a vegetable, she has these soybeans in the husk still. Yeah. Uh, that we neither one of us are Those ever going to eat. Those are good if you dip them in butter, but then the butter's bad. Yeah, but you got to open the husk and eat them. Yeah. She fed me the damn husks one night. Yeah, and I didn't, he ate the husks. I, I mean, you I can't eat the husks, no, no Tom. But it was he snow peas or something. I just ate them. It was really tough. <laughs> You saw, saw me eating those about halfway I through. through it. About I halfway through, she goes, "You know, Tom, you're not supposed to eat the husk." And I'm like, "Well, damn it, Yvonne, why didn't you tell me? I mean, I'm halfway through it. What do you, you know?" Well, it's kind of funny to watch. But I mean, how, how, how is your, uh, how is your, uh, your, uh, well, how do you say your transit time after eating those husks? That, I'm fascinated by that. You mean, you mean was was the exit as enjoyable as the entry? <laughs> Uh, you know, I got to tell you, I got a pretty good system. Uh, pushed it right out. I don't, I don't recall any, uh, any sharp edges or anything. So it was, uh, pretty All right. that. you know, but it w that wouldn't be, the, but you know, this wouldn't be the first time my bowel movements became an internet, uh, you know, but like the, some Walter. group I was in, uh, was tracking when I went to the hospital for Yvonne says it's cause I ate too much. He ate too much and he gave himself a, some kind of problem with his uh, hey, intestine. Yeah. He ate so much at Thanksgiving, his stomach got so big. He looked like he was like nine months pregnant. Yeah, anyway. Like, Something's wrong with you. It doesn't look like, you know? <laughs> and next thing I know, they're taking him to the hospital. He just went into the, the you know, urgent care and they said, you're going in the hospital. What did they did they pump your stomach or what? No, they didn't do shit. It was I just a, an inflammation of his the best thing that came out of that whole visit was a blog post and uh, yeah. And then the Facebook and group was like tracking my bowel movements like NORAD. Yeah, uh, you know, looking at a, so at a missile. We're, we're doing a countdown. I, I wake up, check my Facebook. Anybody find out if Tom took a shit yet? I mean, that's <laughs> that's really what I woke up to. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, boy, I can't wait till this happens. It was like hey, this, this it was actually. This is, 
The, These are the, per the perils of celebrity life, folks. People yeah. are going to watch every little yeah, bout. They're going to want to know. That's right. Um, the uh, okay. Now here's another thing about this that I'd come up with. Now, I, I believe that people only do what they want to do, and I mean everybody, because there's really only one thing you have to do, and that's die. That's, I mean, at some point you have to, it's just going to happen. Everything else is optional, all right? Now, for instance, eating. That is optional. You are, you do not have to eat. It's just simply a matter of preference. We prefer eating to dying, okay? Agreed. Okay. Uh, working, obviously, I don't want to work, but I prefer it to being homeless, uh, you know, and obeying the law. I prefer it to jail, taking care of my kids. I prefer you know, if I had kids, I just would prefer that to jail. Uh, so everything, if you think about it, there's really nothing in the world that you have to do. So everything you do, it's because you want to do it. Or it's, it's that you prefer uh, to do that. So really, you can call what I do or don't do around the house, darling, a matter of, you know, me being lazy, not motive. Maybe uh, I'm just like you and doing what I want to do. You know, you want to go to the grocery store because you prefer that to starvation. Me, I prefer starvation. <laughs> I would far more rather starve than go to the grocery store. Yeah, you did go out and buy beans the other day. Well, yeah. And, and he actually went to a roadside market and bought like fruits and vegetables. I'd never done that before. Yeah, he'd you never know, done that. I've never so been. I just wondered what it was like and. uh, you know, I knew that was the only way any food. vegetables were like going to come in the house. Years. And it's a whole hell of a lot easier to hand that guy cash than it is to go to a grocery store. I cannot stand being in a grocery store. Yeah, you're terrible. And no, you're terrible. That's <laughs> the when you know, I'm not allowed to grocery shop. The thing about all that. <laughs> no, he's not. I, she will never take me grocery shopping with her. No, it's pitiful. It's like taking a three year old. It's terrible. When. Because he does, does he get does he get to sit in the cart? Do you let him sit in no, the cart? No, I don't yeah. go. I don't, I stay home and get the kitchen he cleaned. He whines up. the whole time. How much longer? How much longer? Well, how it, much longer? It, it, okay, that's part of it. But you know why <laughs> I ask how much longer? How much longer? The it's because I am bar I am bombarded with questions that I don't really give a shit what the answer is to. Why, you know, will you eat this? Will you eat this? Will you eat this? I said, Yvonne, just I don't care. It, it, I'll eat it. I promise no matter what you buy, I'll eat it. That's as long as it's not hummus or any of the other horse shit that you know I don't like. We've been married for year, forever, so you, you ought to know what I like by now. I know you like beans, so I buy beans. There you go. And I, I, hear, I hear you like, like soybean husks. You won't participate. You won't participate. <laughs> yeah. So he gets beans. Yeah. Get, get some soybeans with an extra thick husk on them. I wasn't. Yeah, extra thick husk. <laughs> I found the, uh, the last ones are a little, little too easy. No, I found the ones without the husk, so. We're good there. But yeah, we switched. So we went from Boca Burgers. Now we're kind of in this flux where we don't know where to go next. Because we're kind of like one food eaters. Like we eat one type of food all the time. Yeah. So what do you wow. do with your diet? Do well, you, um, pretty I'm, varied? I'm lucky. Uh, Rachel, uh, my wife, is uh, mm -hmm. very, very skilled at making shit taste good. Or what you guys <laughs> might call shit. But, but she can really take almost anything and make it really, really Good, but we have been doing. Uh, well, I'll give you. I'll give you a brain hack. Um, what I do throughout the day uh, to keep the brain at a hundred percent is I have jars of nuts and then dried mm -hmm. apricots. And if you take oh, yeah. one full of nuts and one dried apricot and you eat uh, these things together, you get the glucose from the apricot and, mm -hmm. the fiber, and that's your brain fuel. And then the protein actually helps uh, extend the curve of the burning of the glucose. So you mm -hmm. actually get mental stamina from it. I don't know that's that's something you don't really give a crap about there, Tom, but mental stamina, I like that. Um, <laughs> thank you. For, <laughs> thank you for making it. We're definitely... We you know, definitely you a word earlier that began neuro, and I didn't even give you a hard time about it. We don't. <laughs> we generally don't allow neuro type. You know, if the words that begin with neuro, we don't use on the show. But, but I'm sorry, please. Because we're not about getting better. We're about <laughs> celebrating how bad we are. <laughs> that, that that makes for entertainment, folks. Yeah. But but yeah, no, we we are we are you know definitely eating a lot less uh, animal protein. Although we're not we're not scared. Yeah. We had some we had some bison bolognese last night. Ooh. Uh, that sounds good. We had we had some spaghetti swash that was in the freezer for like months, yeah, and we thawed good. that out. And then she made a bolognese with the bison ground bison meat and some um, uh, Rayo's uh, marinade, uh, you know, mm -hmm. jarred. And 
Magnifique. She got, she got a lovely wife that cooks wonderful food for you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, lucky. I'm, I'm lucky. And the other thing is, she told me early on about not eating the husks of the soybeans. Oh, so yeah, that would have been awesome. But, but you're good at the grocery store. Yeah, well, and that's yeah. just one benefit of having a wife that gives a shit about your well-being. Do you have things that you have to do that you don't want to do that you do? Yeah, that was, yeah. That was my yeah. question. Now, people think of you and they hear you and you're so professional and you always look sharp and, and that's awesome. But that's you who you are. But what I want to know... Go ahead. What I want to know is, like... Do you ever wake up and you got something doing, you know, and you just say, you know what, piss on this and then just go sit on the couch and flip the TV on knowing that. And I mean, I mean, I'm not asking you to say something that undermine your credibility, but you're a human being. And I figure, you know, like I have this, th this image of you in my mind that you're just like, all go, no stop. I get it done, get it done, get it done. I didn't even realize you were, I mean, I, I knew you were ADHD, but I didn't never see it until at the ADA conference, I'm like, oh, damn, this guy's a little, yeah, yeah. I mean, I got, I kind of got it there. Yeah. But, I mean, when's the last time you just woke up? You know what? Piss on it. I'm just going to well, play my Xbox. Well, well, here, here's, here's my thing. You, you have to remember that uh, uh, before I was diagnosed, whenever I would get stuck or frustrated or whatever, I would go out and I would get drunk and I would snort a whole bunch of cocaine. Yeah. And I, <laughs> when I'd run out of it, I would go to Harlem and I would get some more of it. And yeah. So, you know, I, I've had many years of getting frustrated or bored or not wanting to do something and then just escaping into something completely way stupider than sitting on the couch and doing this. So I've been sort of conditioned to, for me, just not waste any time. So I can sit down and watch a little bit of TV out of just some frustration or being tired. But five minutes in, I'm like, I'm not learning anything. I'm not getting anything new from this. What am I doing? Either, so I either need to be learning something or getting true relaxation or moving something forward. Otherwise, I'm just not happy. And that's just me. And, you know, Tom, it's like you said before, it's still a matter of choices. It we're is. Making choices and we're making the choices that are right for us. But and that's what you enjoy doing. I do. I, I enjoy it. And again, I, I, it's kind of like I forget who said this, whether it was Ella Fitzgerald or somebody who said, you know, I've seen poor and I've seen rich. And Rich is a heck of a lot better. And I just, I don't, I've seen drug addict and I've seen drunk and I've seen wasting a lot of time. I wasted at least 10 years of my life really kind of almost doing nothing. Wow. And so I've, I've done that and I'm just, I'm just done doing that. So I'm always going, I'm always moving forward and I'm always looking for ways to keep my brain going and not being tired so that I can get more done. And you know what? The joy of getting stuff done, like launching this thing yesterday, we just launched yesterday. I mean, that's a joy that you don't get from completing a, you know, uh, 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 watching, you know, four seasons of Seinfeld. It's just, it's mm -hmm. a much richer, higher level. I don't mean that in an intellectual kind of snooty sense, but it's just a higher high. Now, I get that. Cause... That's kind of why I got Tom the podcasting equipment, because I saw him just sitting there and kind of doing nothing. So for Christmas, I bought him the podcasting equipment, and he absolutely hated me for it. Did he really? Yeah. I mean, look at the I joy this off. guy gets me. This, like, this is like his motivating thing, man. He's look yeah, what he's well, done with this thing. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is, is huge for him now. It was just easier to just write my blog and say the things I wanted to say, and 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 I'm thinking, well, now I got to do a podcast, and I got this book coming out soon, and I don't know what. I mean, I didn't have time, and I, I about a, it was about a month. I, almost exactly about a month later on Christmas Day that we recorded our first show, and I even told Yvonne, you know, Yvonne, now I'm gonna. I mean, you're going to be on the show sometimes, but not like all the time, right? And <laughs> yeah. of course, Yvonne, in her head, we're doing, this is, what it is now is sort of what Yvonne had envisioned. And uh, I didn't, I'm like, well, damn it. I mean, what the hell? I mean, you know, so anyway, we went ahead and did the first show. But you know what? After we recorded that first show, we just had so much fun uh, doing it that I don't, I would not want to do a show without her. If I have to, I will. Uh, I think I've done one without her. Uh, and with that, when Eric came in and just sat in for Yvonne, uh, but, um, it, well, it, I, I love, you know, and it's way better now because instead of sitting around, uh, writing on my blog with her just sitting on the chair next to me in total silence. And if she asked me a question, it's always obviously right in the middle of a, of, of a major thought. So there, then I have to, I look at it like, what, what are you doing? You know, and then. It's just now. It's just like we collaborate together on it. And we do it together, and we get to have fun with it together. So it's well, 
my favorite thing is that she went and bought you this equipment because she saw this possibility of a passion and you were like, oh man, my God, Jesus. And, <laughs> well, I and, faked it. I said thank you and acted excited. I didn't tell her, oh, this sucks. I mean, I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not, I mean, but, I was, but in, but in your own mind, you were, you were like, but I'm not an idiot, but you were still, you're like, oh man, this, 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 well, I got to learn all this stuff and all that. And, and the, the reason I, I just kind of want to kind of point back to that is that when we have Stacy Tours on in episode three in a couple of weeks, she talks about how, you know, when we start, when we start to feel in our body, oh man, I don't, I'm, I'm worried about that or I'm worried I won't be able to do it or geez, you know, I'm launching a TV show or I'm launching a podcast or I'm actually doing video now. And when you get those feelings down here of, of, of wow, I'm nervous, I don't think this is going to work out. That's almost your cue to say, F it, I'm doing this, and if it doesn't work out, fine. But when you, when you push the envelope on those things, it's like she kind of forced you to push the envelope, and what you ended up with was, is what we're doing here today. You've got lots of fans. Everybody uh, uh, loves the show and loves you guys. And look what you created out of something that might have at first, and I know you appreciated what she did, but – even still, at first, you were kind of probably thinking, oh, man, I, really, I just wanted to do a podcast, man. Why are you going to make my life so complicated? Yeah, it's like, well, well, you know, hey, I spent two years making a name for myself. Who, who do you think you are trying to ride in on my coattails? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, Yvonne, but Yvonne, I mean, she's been in the blog and uh you know me i write about her a lot in the blog and she i even she did a couple of guest uh you know articles that she wrote and and i mean she's never been completely absent from it uh but you know i'm it's it was a solitary thing i am so i am better we... i'm better with her than than without her i wouldn't i, I couldn't do this i wouldn't I, honestly if it wasn't you know spending time with her is one of the biggest motivators to actually come up here and get all this stuff ready to go and uh and and get it started. Uh, that is the nicest thing I've ever heard you say about anything or anyone. Know, What's wrong with you? You know, it's just I, I He's write. Really a nice guy. He tries to hide it. I know he is. You know, it's really a nice guy. It's I write about how I think and feel. I don't. I mean, like when I go out, I'm not a asshole to everybody. But I mean, if they knew what I was thinking, they might not even want to stand near me. I mean, it's. I mean, it, it's. No, I mean, I did that one lady at the grocery store. I just couldn't keep it contained, and I. I shared with her very calmly uh, how I felt and, and she didn't appreciate it. But I mean, I, and I made a small scene, but I didn't care. You know, it was, yeah. all right. uh, she, Oh, she, she, you know, here she is. It's, it's a uh, thanks or Christmas Eve. And she's in the line buying one of two of those little, you know, those little round dishes with all the cheese and sausage and shit in there, you know, like a party yeah. tray. Yeah, and yeah. she's got like a twelve pack of beer and like four bottles of wine, right? And she get and she's in front of me, and she gets up to the the checkout lane and says, uh, "You know, the guy starts ringing it up, and she goes, oh, I think that is just dreadful that you have to work on uh, Christmas Eve. Why would they make you guys do that?" And I'm like, oh, "Okay, okay, uh, ma'am, if you don't mind." I she looked back and I said, "Let me explain to you why that is." The reason is, is because people like yourself uh, create a marketplace. <laughs> they, they, they come here on Christmas Eve while these people are working. And therefore, the companies say, well, people come to these places. If we want to capitalize on that, maybe we should have employees in place of us being closed. Therefore, you get to go home and load up all your guests with alcohol so that they can feel good while this poor bastard sits up here and has absolutely no idea what his family's doing at home all by themselves. I'm, you asked, I'm just, you felt like you wanted, and she goes, well, if you're here. And I said, that's true, ma'am. I am here and it is Christmas Eve and I am just as much a part of the problem. But what I'm not is I'm not trying to stand behind some empty apology and separating myself from the guilt that I feel from being here. If you're going to be here, I just feel like you ought to take the guilt and because nobody's really buying that you're sorry. Because if you were, you wouldn't be here. And she goes, I think we're done talking. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, that's fine. Now, yeah. yeah, that was a bit of an asshole. And it's really funny as I, you know, but I mean, yeah, it was kind of dickish. I mean, it was, but I just, it was like a, I don't know why. It's hard to believe I actually did that, but I. There's the, there's the title of your next book, Tom. The Dickish Truth. <laughs> yeah, well, if the, <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna. 
<laughs> the Dickish Truth yeah, by true. Tom Nardone. As soon, yeah, as soon as this book hits 100 copies sold, yeah, I'll get on that next one right, right away. I am going to, I'm going to create your book cover. Right now. <laughs> Here it is. Bear with me. The Dickish <laughs> Truth. Tom Nardone. All right. Hold on, hold on. Let me just make this a little when it bigger. Comes out, I will give you my word, Alan. That is the cover. That's beautiful. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, Yvonne, huh? asked, Yvonne told me I should ask you this. The Dickish Truth. Hey, that's actually that looks it looks kind cool. of impressive. Actually, make sure you hey, make sure you send me that. I'm gonna put that on the show now. Hey, you help me with the design of the studio. I've just helped you design your book cover. We're even. We're even. Yvonne told me to ask you a silly, silly question. <laughs> What's that? Are you going to Chad? I'm speaking at Chad. Of course you okay, are. Okay, good, good. Of course yes, you are. We're looking forward to seeing I you. I am not. I have not been asked yet. You will so one day. Let's run. We're going to run this by you. Uh, here's what we were thinking about doing. Now, I don't know. Yvonne, I know Chad's more medical and kind of science-y. Yeah, more academic, which, which yeah. Obviously, I have absolutely no interest in any of that, but I'd probably go listen to yours thing. Uh, however... My thought on it was we would bring one of those fold-out tables and our banner, our microphones, and the thing, and just set up in the in the lobby of the hotel and just start doing the show. And if anybody and have a microphone there, and if anybody wants to come by and check in, say hi, whatever, while you know while they're going between <laughs> shit, and we'll just like cover Chad live uh, from the lobby of the hotel. Which That's you know, awesome. Yeah. And when and when sec when security comes, I <laughs> yeah. ask you how much did you did you guys pay for your booth? And you'll say, no, well, we I, don't have a booth. We're in the hotel lobby. We're in the hotel lobby, and then you, the, Yvonne, can hold the camera to film the melee that ensues when you yeah. start telling him the dickish truth. That's right. About yeah. why it is that you should be there <laughs> covering this event for the benefit of humanity and the <laughs> awesomeness of Tom. You know what? You sit there with us because that's good. You, and you can tell him. And I'll just sit there and go. Yeah, I'll, I'll sit there right with you. We'll, we'll put a blackout for you. But, uh, but honestly, <laughs> we'll, like we, a mafia. But we said like if, if we thing. left the tape going, I mean, that would be a show worth getting. I mean, to get kicked out of Chad for do it for for doing like a pirate podcast from the hotel lobby, that would be an awesome show. That would be a great blog that, post. That's and something great people would want to hear. I mean, look, I love Chad. I got no issue with them. I'm, I'm just saying, uh, it'd be funny. Well, are you got you guys are gonna be there? Yeah, yeah. that's the plan. We're I, I'm, I got my. I haven't got my vacation approved yet. You know, but uh, it 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 will. All right. Well, it's verbally I look, approved, just not. I look forward to seeing you guys. That's yeah. great. Um, I think that's man. That's all we had. Uh, you got any? Is there anything else you wanted to say? Oh, uh, it's. I don't know if we we talked about Crusher TV, but I don't know if we actually gave the URL out. It's CrusherTV.com, right? Yeah. Yeah. Come you check know, actually, it out. Yeah. Go ahead. Crusher.com. Did you go to that by mistake? I went to Crusher.com. Is some guy wanting to sell that website for fifteen thousand dollars? The name. Yeah. You know, it's funny. <laughs> I get, uh, I get, it, it's, it's a great, it's a great URL for somebody, but the, the funny thing is that I get Google, I set up a Google alert <clears throat> for ADD Crusher, you know, so that I can see if, you know, where I'm getting press and all this. And I get these Google alerts where ADD Crusher is appearing on all these sites for crushing machines, like stone crushing. <laughs> and there are countless websites devoted to stone crushing machines really? and the science thereof and the sale thereof, et cetera. And I apparently am getting, my links are getting pulled into these sites. <laughs> anyway, no, but but uh, back to the Crusher TV URL is indeed crushertv.com. Come to the site, check it out, watch a couple of previews. We don't have a full episode posted yet because our first episode is Monday night, but Sign up. It's just a buck to try it for 30 days, and you're going to find that that buck is going to be very, very well spent because you're going to learn a lot of great stuff. We're going to have a lot of fun, and I thank you guys for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Oh, no, we'd love it, to have you. It's a pleasure, Alan. And, you know, you're you're the third guest we've ever had out of, I guess, what, 40 shows now. Yeah. We had, we had uh, Eric, of course. He did the stand-in and uh, uh, the Extreme Mom. So, And I will tell you, uh, you just stand by. The the floodgates are open. Uh, I I don't know if hopefully whatever. Hopefully you got a good server for that URL because I think you're gonna do really well. I bet you at least six people are gonna 
head today. I'll take six Tom I mean, Nardones. All, six, all six people out there listening to this show are going straight to crush your teeth. I'll, I'll take six. I'll take six Tom <laughs> Nardone followers over over five hundred Oprah Winfrey followers any day of the week. No, we do better than six people. That's the dickish truth. That is the dickish truth. <laughs> you know what? Maybe that should be like a spot. Like I'm Tom Nardone, and, and that is the, the dickish, dickish truth. truth. Yes, could be. If we, if and we, what I say, and I'll and I'll close with this because this is what I say on Crusher TV. Whatever's in your way is yours to crush. Crush it. Even if it's the dickish truth. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, you guys. Thanks right, for having me on. Hello, Goodbye. That was Alan Brown. Great guy. Looks marvelous, by the way. Yeah. The camera loves him. And I say this with a unblemished record yeah. of staunch heterosexuality. He looks he looks fabulous. Yeah. He does. Yeah. All right. Little man but that... It's not a man. A little, little bit. Yeah, I hope. Uh, man, that. Hey, this is the longest show you and I have ever done. Oh. We are. Wow. Well, I mean, that's counting on waiting. So it I don't feel know. like it. I don't know how long it'll actually be when. But anyway. Uh, any, oh, one other thing. Uh, Kirsten Milliken. Oh, excuse me. Dr. Kirsten Milliken. Very uh, good friend of mine and friend of the show. Uh, asked me to announce that the ACO conference is going to be, I think it's some, I'll, I'll have better information, uh, but you can go to playdhd.com and I'm sure she has a link on her site to it uh, or the ACO's website. Um, it's going to be in, I think, April, it seemed like they said April, May. I don't, I guess there's, or maybe it's like the very tail end of April and early May. I don't remember, but it seemed like April and May or it's April or May, but anyway, next spring, uh, this coming spring, I guess, the ACO conference will be in Virginia. So maybe, maybe we'll go to that. We'll see how Chad goes. But I don't know. You know, that's actually a coaches conference. Yeah, we'll probably be so kicked out of that one. Yeah, so I don't know if we're going to be welcome there. But yeah. actually, actually, Kirsten says we are more than welcome there. So we. Yeah. So I don't know. If, I don't know if anybody else that's not a coach will be allowed mm -hmm. entry. But you and I, we're, we'll be fine. Um, all right. What else you got? Anything? I thought Monster was a good show. Yeah, it was a pretty good show. Love Alan Brown. Yeah, uh, a lot of fun. Great guy. Uh, Look forward to his show. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's uh, CrusherTV.com. Uh, for those of you who didn't get that, I'm gonna definitely subscribe for a dollar. You can't beat that. So. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. I'm Tom Nardone. You're welcome, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Stop. Yeah. <laughs>